Michael Oliver isn't blowing that whistle yet. He does now! An astonishing end to an incredible season. One for the ages. Manchester City under Pep Guardiola have seen off the amazing Liverpool to win a fourth title in five seasons by a single point. Fans invade the Etihad turf. Some are on their knees, punching the sky. The players have had no chance to get through that and get into the dressing rooms. Boy, they did it the hard way today. Tears for Pep Guardiola. He becomes only the second manager in Premier League history to win four titles in five years. He's joined Sir Alex Ferguson with that feat. When it really mattered, a substitution at half-time, Zinchenko on, and then Gundogan on, and he scored two vital goals. City scored three in five minutes, 36 seconds. And they are the champions of the Premier League. Well, we're seeing the scenes from Anfield as well. It was 1-1 for an age at that point. And with Aston Villa leading City by two goals to nil, everyone in Anfield was aware that they needed a goal. By the time they'd scored it, Manchester City were 3-2 up. And look at the emotion on Kevin De Bruyne's face. They were staring at a trophyless season with about 20 minutes to go in this game. But they secure the Premier League title, the most, pr the most difficult one to win, according to Pep Guardiola. The quadruple dream has ended for Liverpool. League Cup in the bank, FA Cup in the bank, second place in the Premier League. Will they win a seventh European Cup next weekend in Paris against Real Madrid? Lee Graham, you're going to get amongst that to get some interviews, hopefully. We'll have the trophy lift shortly, but Rebecca, astonishing scenes, both at Anfield with you and the Etihad here. 3-2 to Manchester City, they did it the hard way, but City are the champions. Back to you. Arlo, thank you. City fans talk about being put through the ringer. Massive congratulations on becoming champions. Liverpool pushed to the last 10 minutes of this magic season, but they can still win a treble of their own. If you're watching on USA or Peacock right now, don't do anything. We're staying here live for all the scenes. But for those of you on NBC, Sci-Fi, CNBC or Golf, switch over to USA or Peacock right now. We've got a two-hour additional goal zone. We've got the trophy list lift as well as the Premier League season comes to a close. the most magical of sports. It can produce the most magical of moments and heartbreak as well. It went one way, it went the other, but it ended up the Premier League trophy at the Etihad with those blue ribbons, which we will see being lifted shortly. The Liverpool fans are not leaving their seats, of course. They want to pay their respects and give their applause to this quite incredible team under Jurgen Klopp, who've done so much this season. Two cups in the bag, they've still got the Champions League to come, but the pitch invasion at Manchester City, as you can see, they are getting ready for their trophy lift for the fourth time in five seasons. Six overall, Manchester City once again, Kings of England.
if you're wondering who's clinched top four, it was an easy day for Tottenham smashing Norwich at Carrow Road. They have finished in fourth spot. Arsenal beat Everton at home, but it's not enough. Arsenal finish in the Europa League spot of fifth. Manchester United are also going to play Europa League football. They finished in sixth position with West Ham playing Europa Conference League football in seventh. And the big story at the bottom, one of the biggest clubs in this country, Leeds United, have stayed up. We'll bring you all those scenes from the Brentford Community Stadium where Leeds have finished 2-1 winners against Brentford. And that means that Burnley have been relegated, losing 2-1 against Newcastle United. So Burnley down, Leeds up, City champions, Tottenham top four. It's a party atmosphere at the Etihad Stadium, as you can quite understand, although the authorities inside the Etihad are asking everybody to get off the pitch immediately. We've seen a run of these pitch invasions throughout English football this week, whether it's been semi-finals of playoffs, finals of playoffs, and of course at Everton on Thursday as well when they clinch safety. It's a dangerous situation. It's illegal to enter the field of play. You can understand the jubilation of these fans, especially after the game we just saw, and the fear that they were going to let the Premier League title slip through their fingers, but no, they managed to pull it back. And they've all been asked to leave the pitch so that the trophy presentation can be put in place and Fernandinho can get himself ready on his last game for the club. What a servant he's been. He needs to get himself ready to lift that trophy to the skies once again. Tim, we were watching the game at Anfield behind us from our studio here, keeping an eye on the game at the Etihad. We had no idea what was going to happen. I don't think anybody did. Did you see that Manchester City comeback happening? No, it was gone. It was gone. The game was out of their hands, down 2-0. What an incredible comeback. Just, just the fact they had the resilience and the wherewithal not to put their heads down. I know they're the world-class players. I know they're champions. But that was monumental for them to come back in the second half the way they did. And I tell you what, these fans, these Manchester City fans have been criticized for a long time. But you can tell with these scenes what it means to them. They showed up this season as they have before, and it means the world to them. But, Tim, life is normally so easy for Manchester City. My goodness, how do you explain that first half and then the second? Was that second half? I mean, obviously, it was about the substitution of Gundogan coming on. He got two of the goals. Pep Guardiola's half-time team talk, no doubt. But it was, a, it was such a, a juxtaposition of performances. Yeah, yeah well, for, for Manchester City, it, it was a sputter late on. They were down two goals against West Ham last week, down two, two goals again against Aston Villa. This is a team that almost, for their for their standard, limped to the title. Um, but again, they just showed, they showed the resilience that we're just so accustomed to. In one sense, you think it's weak-minded for them to go down those goals. But gosh, they showed a lot of heart. Well, I know that Robbie Musto at halftime felt that he couldn't see a City comeback on the books. I don't think many people could. Robbie Earl did plump, though, for Manchester City to come back and win it. Robbie and Robbie are down on the pitch at Anfield. Gentlemen, try and describe the atmosphere down there at the final whistle and how it all unfolded in and around you. Well, Rebecca, I mean, talk on a coaster. I mean, from where we were sitting, people around us. Of course, we're looking across to our right and seed seeing the cop getting more excited. I mean, I, I think we, we both felt like Liverpool, yeah, I'm yeah. sure the goal was going to come. I mean, it, you know, it took a long time to get their football going. Mo Salah comes into the game, Rebecca, didn't do a lot. Firmino had some bad touches, and we just thought, wow, this is not going to happen. 
What's this news of the, the City comeback? I mean, and then people were making erroneous shouts about there's a goal, yeah. there's not a goal. It's kind of hard to actually keep track of all the stuff that was going on. Yeah, it, it was emotional. We were sitting there amongst the Liverpool fans and we're getting nervous for them about what was happening. But when you look at Manchester City, and I think Tim's made the point, 2 0 down two straight games against two decent teams and they lose neither of those games, win one and draw one. It shows you that this team are not just great footballers, don't just possess the ball, don't just create so many chances. They can dig deep what champions have to do and what it looks like three goals in especially just five or six minutes in the second half is enough to win them the title and you finish where you deserve in the Premier League and Manchester City, I have to say, have deserved to finish top of the pile. Robbie Musto and Robbie Earl down pitch side at Anfield. We will be bringing you post-match interviews both at Anfield, hopefully at our pitch side desk and at the Etihad once the trophy's been lifted as well. Robbie Musto, we talked before the game about nerves. They had to play a part today. It looked like Liverpool were almost too nervous to score and City, obviously in that first half, just shell-shocked. I think so. It must have been. I mean, of course, we didn't see a lot of the City game. We're getting the reaction, of course, the, 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 the data and fact from the match. And Kevin De Bruyne assists for the winning goal. You know, like Gundogan comes into the match. I mean, Gundogan's not had such a big season, but comes in with two huge goals today. And as for Liverpool, Rebecca, yeah, I, I don't know whether it was nerves or whether, you know, the changes from the last game, the flow wasn't great, but they got the job done. They won the game and 3-1 at the end. It's just remarkable that the, that the City came back like that. Again, like we're getting news on our phone and through other people. And for them to come back from 2 0 down, I mean, I know what Pep's going to say. Pep's going to talk about the spirit, the character. Did you ever doubt this team, as he said many times before? Um, but Robbie's right. 38 games, you play every other team home and away. They've come out on top by one point. There's two remarkable football teams for sure, but again, like 2019, City have just, just done it. Ten years since that Aguero time, that, that, that late night mini goal, and it, it almost like the drama was going that way, Rob. We, we weren't too sure at one point whether City were going to do it, whether Liverpool would score here and, and get the win that needed to take them to the title. But the fans played a part for City today. The fans haven't been there in the last couple of seasons for them, what they did today, and they got them over the line, and Pep Guardiola and his team, congratulations, title winners, four out of five seasons. The top half of the table looks like this. Everyone has finished, everyone's played 38 games, the trophy symbol we get out at this time every year, and it's alongside the name of Manchester City. They win the title, so where are we in terms of overall Premier League champions? United still way out of front, 13 Premier League titles to their name, but City now move one above Chelsea. They have six to their name. Next comes Chelsea, Arsenal with three, and Blackburn, Leicester, and Liverpool still with just the one trophy for now. Congratulations, Ilka, you've done it, but have you done it in typical Manchester City style? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was an unbelievable game. Uh, I don't know what to say, to be honest. I don't even know what the Liverpool score was at the end. But, but yeah, uh, obviously, it's been fantastic. The last uh, 15, 20 minutes scoring three goals. It's unbelievable. Liverpool won 3 1. Just how nerve wracking was that for you and the City players today? 2 0 down. <sighs> Honestly, <clears throat> I think um, we are all human beings, and um, obviously, after going 2 0 down, the chances were were just <laughs> very, very small. And obviously, we knew that on the pitch, but um, I think. Um, we had to do the simple things again uh, in the best possible way um, and obviously scoring the two goals in just, I don't know, three minutes or four minutes um, and then having ten minutes to score a third one uh, gave us the right lift and um, yeah, um, scoring the third and then uh, finishing in that style, you know, keeping the ball uh, in that corner, I think um, was very smart, very mature and uh, yeah, we are. We are proud of ourselves today. Just how nerve-wracking was it? You're 2-0 down, you're thinking Liverpool are bound to win. And you can almost feel the title slipping away. The tension in the ground was unbelievable. Did you feel it? Yeah, of course. I mean, um, probably it was, um, it was more a negative tension than a positive one, uh, especially after being 2-0 being down. So, um, yeah, but still uh, it was about um, getting, that, getting that goal and then we knew um, once the momentum is on our side that uh, we are able to score even, even three goals in just uh, a few minutes and uh, that's exactly what we did and uh, I think as, uh, as football fans uh, and we players, we are also fans at the end of the day, um, these are the days um, that you 
look back uh, to look back to and uh, yeah it, it was an unbelievable one. what has it been like it's almost impossible to take it in so quickly but you've slugged it out with Liverpool right to the very death of the season it's an incredible competition between the pair of you yeah I mean I know it's uh, maybe tough to say but um, if Liverpool would not be de uh, there and uh, would not play the way they are playing uh, an incredible football um, and uh, very successful. I don't think um, that uh, this league could have been that att that attractive. So um, even though again they finished to just one point, uh, I think behind us, I think they played an incredible season, and uh, I think we pushed each other uh, again to the to the limits. And um, even though it's a sad day for them today, I think um, you need to appreciate what they have done, and uh, especially my former coach. I mean, uh, which uh, which I still um, like a lot. Uh, congratulations to them as well, and um, we are looking forward to compete again with them next season. How much are you also looking forward to going and getting that trophy now in front of your own fans? Yeah, I'm looking very much forward to it, obviously. Um, it's been, I think it's, it's the fourth now in, in five years um, for us, for myself. Uh, it's always a, a, huge, a huge moment, uh, an incredible achievement um, yeah, to, do it, to do it that way. And obviously it's more about you know, the togetherness within the team. Uh, with the people uh, who are in the stadium today, with our families, our friends, and um, that's uh, that's what we appreciate the most. Ilkay, two goals and you're a Premier League winner yet again. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, scenes like this, Manchester City fans are getting used to having to stay on at the end of the season to watch their side lift the Premier League trophy for the fourth time in five seasons. You can see the extensive backroom staff these days at big clubs like Manchester City. There are many, many faces that you don't know what they do, but they all play a huge part in getting this side to become champions. Just saw Pep Guardiola sneak past them on the left of your screen. And I think at the back, yeah, it's, it's staff all the way down the back of that tunnel. I, for one, at the moment, can't see too many players. I think they're starting to gather right at the back, Richard Wright, possibly back there, and a few others as well. Let's take you to our commentator at the Etihad for the trophy presentation, Arlo White. Rebecca, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, it's a busy tunnel down there, down beneath us. They have a large staff, Manchester City. They're all experts in what they do, and they contribute massively to this football club and their recent successes. It's a fourth title in five seasons. It's a sixth title in 11 for them. That's the second most now in Premier League history. United lead the way, of course, with 13, but they've overtaken Chelsea's five titles. This is just the Premier League era, of course. Overall, City have won the title for the eighth time. Only Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal and Everton have been champions of England more times than that. So here come the backroom staff. Took a while to clear the pitch. Jubilant Manchester City fans poured on. It took a while for one or two of the players to make their way through as well. The crossbar away to our right-hand side was snapped in two with jubilant fans climbing on board. But on a daily basis at the training ground, these are the people that make it happen. When we reflect on today and what we've seen, we'll remember that entering the 76th minute, Manchester City trailed Aston Villa by two goals to nil. At that point, Liverpool needed a goal. It was 1-1 at Anfield against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Then all hell broke loose. Three goals in five minutes and 36 seconds, and City turned it around. Two from Ilkay Gundogan, and a beautifully calm passed ball into the corner by Rodri. Salah and Robertson scored late on for Liverpool. 3-1 winners over Wolves, but they're pipped by a point. 
community. The foundation is challenging our way to the community. With the Premier League Making our way to the podium. Please welcome. With the Premier League Trophy. Please welcome. From our eternal CITC CC3's program. So, as ever, someone important to Manchester City has the honour of bringing out the Premier League trophy and it's 22-year-old Olivia Wilkinson. Wonderful moment for Olivia Wilkinson. Presentation committee, Richard Masters, the chief executive of the Premier League, with a few calming words for Ben Mason, aged 16. On March the 7th, Ben's sister, Kezia, took her own life. She was just 14 years of age. Ben has made great strides and supported his family, helped to support his family at the tender age of 16. And this will be a moment, a positive moment, that he will never forget. The coaching staff make their way out. It took 29 wins, 99 goals, 93 points, but City lost one of their final 28 games. Pep Guardiola said in the build-up to this final game, I'm not saying the Champions League is not important, we are mad crazy to win it. We'd love to be in Paris next week. But to win 38 games rather than 6, 8 or 9, it's different. The Premier League, he says, is more difficult. Tough opponents, lots of games, good and bad moments. And Pep will lead out his side. Tears at the final whistle for Pep Guardiola, a man who's seen it all in this great game of football but he must have felt it slipping away. There were 12 minutes and 22 seconds between Philip Coutinho giving Villa a 2-0 lead and Ilkay Gundogan putting City 3-2 up to seal the title. The pet, by the way, it's ten titles in his thirteen seasons as a senior manager, quite incredible. Barcelona, 
Bayern Munich and now four with Manchester City. Kevin De Bruyne had a sensational end to the season. The Premier League Player of the Year. City get 40 medals to distribute as they see fit. 18 players played the requisite five games that guarantee them a medal. United States international Zach Steffen played or started one Premier League game in the absence of Edison. Joint Golden Glove winner this season with Allison. That's the third season in a row that he's won that title. Surprise inclusion today for John Stones, but he ends the day with another medal around his neck. Another winner's medal for Nathan Ake from Ukraine. You can only imagine what he's been through over the last few months. He came on the field at half time and helped to change the game completely. Laporte played through the pain barrier in the closing stages of the season. What a season Juan Cancelo has had. A first major trophy for the former Villa man, Jack Grealish. Super goal today for Rodri. Seven for the season and another title for him. Made way today for Ilkay Gundogan, but what a player Bernardo Silva is. He was on the field during that chaotic three-goal period. Maybe leaving the club, Jesus, we'll have to wait and see. But he played a massive role in the running. Relief for Riyad Mahrez. He ends the season as City's top scorer in all competitions. And no one will remember the penalty at West Ham last week. Phil Foden, he wins a fourth title. He was on the bench today, Kyle Walker. Available if required. I wonder how close Pep Guardiola came to bringing him on. Ruben Diaz has missed the immediate run-in after being injured against Real Madrid. A colossus at the back for this City side. Wait for this. Come of the hour. Come of Ilkay Gundogan, two goals. The leading German goal scorer in the Premier League in history. And Kevin De Bruyne. The heartbeat of the City team. Played his 383rd game for Manchester City today and his final one Richard Masters and young Ben Mason will lift the trophy the moon is blue the ribbons are blue Manchester is blue let's all do the pulse now everyone Manchester City are the champions of the Premier League once again it's another final day that is now part of this club's growing legend.
It's taken 90 plus points once again to lift this trophy. They've done it for the sixth time, for the fourth time in five years. It's a dynasty, all right. Congratulations, Pep Guardiola and Manchester City. Peter Doherty did it in 1937, Tony Buck in 1968, Vincent Company did it three times, Fernandinho twice, captains of Manchester City that lift the league championship trophy. Fernandinho five times a Premier League champion. Does Pep have in store tactically with the introduction of Erling Haaland for next season? It's a scary prospect for the rest of the Premier League. But fabulous news for this league to have a player of that quality coming into the league and not going elsewhere for the prime years of what is going to be a legendary career, I'm sure. send you back to Rebecca after a short break it's been a pleasure for me everyone thank you very much for watching City have the Premier League trophy after a scintillating season that's all for now from the Etihad
Why don't we soak up a few more scenes from the Etihad here? Not too many fans have left. Jubilation here. And the way they do it on the final day, almost 10 years to the day since that famous Aguero moment. 93 minutes, 20 seconds. Well, today's numbers are 5 minutes, 36 seconds. Three goals in that time to settle the nerves and to seal the title. So I know that uh, Lee and Graham are down there trying to grab a word with some of the protagonists who are celebrating. And for the time being, we'll send you back to Anfield Great scenes here, Rebecca, and the boys will send it back to you. Hello, thank you very much indeed. Massive congratulations to Manchester City. Just a small news line coming into us here on NBC. Steven Gerrard, the Aston Villa manager, has claimed that Robin Olsen, Villa's goalkeeper, was actually attacked during the pitch invasion. This is coming from a Daily Mirror journalist, David McDonnell, and Steven Gerrard has spoken to the press, spoken to the Daily Mirror, and said, we're going to see how he is, but I think that you should ask Pep and Manchester City those questions. So that line coming into us from the Daily Mirror about a possible attack on the goalkeeper for Aston Villa, Robin Olsen. Any more on that, of course, we'll bring it to you. But these scenes here at Manchester City, pure jubilation as every player gets a chance to raise this famous Premier League trophy to the skies. And Tim, we were watching the scenes at the final whistle at the Etihad when they did it, when they clinched it, in the way, Tim, that they clinched it. And what was so... I, I, in a funny way, it was surprising, because it's always surprising to see anybody in football cry. It doesn't happen every day, but Pep Guardiola crumbled at the final whistle. Tears were flowing, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't control himself, Tim. Rebecca, I was happy to see Pep Guardiola cry, because there's sometimes when you just think, these players and managers aren't human, that they're not affected by the pressure and not affected by the emotion. But I tell you what, they, they have a lot of sleepless nights, they feel the pressure, and you just saw that release of what it meant to Pep. And it's the fine margins as well, Robbie Musto. They were minutes away from losing this title and having one of the poorest yeah. seasons in a number. They had not won a piece of silverware since Pep's first season. Yep. And then they go and do it right at the end. So that has to just be, does it not, an outpouring of relief? You've Absolutely. been in this situation. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's emotional, isn't it, Rebecca? Uh, the emotion of the pressure on them today, it was theirs. They had it. They had the point advantage, and then the, the scoreline goes against them. But he said it time and time again that this team has got character. We've seen them come from behind many, many times to win now. We're watching an outstanding player in Kevin De Bruyne, who's the best player in the league for me this season. And just thinking back, Rebecca, right at the start of the season, back to our prediction time, and I said, you know what, without a striker, whether Man City can have enough goals in this particular season with the great sides that's in there this year, 99 goals with their 93 <laughs> points. I mean, I know they've got a new high-profile striker coming in Erlen Haaland, of course, but they don't need him. 99 goals is pretty remarkable. And credit again to the coach for, for, for tweaking the way his team plays, that utilises the midfield players, getting the box to score the goal. Well, that's interesting. Let's pick that point yeah. up. Erling Haaland's coming next season. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be a different way of playing that we're going to yes. see from City? There'll have to be an adaption for Haaland, for the way he plays, for the focal point, that he, he's not one of those midfield players who keeps the ball. 
But also to add to, to Robbie's point about no striker, this is a Manchester City team today who were 2-0 down. Today wasn't about false nines and inverted fullbacks and all the tactical things. This was about heart and soul and drive and digging deep. And this Manchester City team have shown they can win a title doing different things with different elements. And that's why Pep's club was so emotional, because they often get told, told they have so much possession, they have all this. But they were 2-0 down and could have lost the title today, and they end up winning 3-2, and we see the pictures that we've seen there. Alexander Zinchenko wrapping the Premier League trophy in the flag of his country, Ukraine. Emotional scenes throughout the course of the last couple of months. As there he is. The emotion is etched on his face as he sheds tears for his people and for his country and all of football have come together and been there for him and there's Jack Grealish Ruben Diaz taking a moment with him Many more things of more importance on the mind of this young man. But a Premier League title winner's medal will be a crumb of comfort after the efforts of the season and everything that his family, friends, and countrymen have been going through. Let's get some post match thoughts from the man who was also incredibly emotional at that final whistle, Pep Guardiola, talking to our colleagues at Sky Sports. And they're singing your song, but your team doesn't always make it easy for yourselves. Definitely not, definitely not. So the last game always is special, a lot of emotions, a good team. They gave everything as from Villa, but the moment we find a goal, we change everything. What did you say to them at half time? Because the first half, of course, did not go to plan. It's normal and tension as normal. We are playing in normal, non-normal circumstances, but you have to handle. You put the ball inside, where they close a lot inside, put the ball. Alex gave us a lot in the first 20 minutes, second half. After the second goal from Coutinho was really difficult, but it was a score and goal and goal and momentum. We, our people did the rest. So a really significant substitution today, Pep. A lot of people, I suppose, were thinking we're going to see Jack Grealish. You decided to send on Ilkay Gundogan. With any special instruction? But Ilkay Gundogan is the best runner in second position that we have. And we arrived in the... In the with Rahim, with, with uh, Joao, with Alex, uh, and with uh, people with a sense of, of the tempo in the final third, he's the best. So how does this compare? Your fourth title in five seasons. Well, we are, these guys, we are legends. So when you win in this country, the Premier League, four times in five years, or six and four, it's because these guys are so, so special. So will be remembered and the first time 100 points we won with a lot of marching the second one in brighton not at home the third fight to fight yes, last season with our people wow winning at home with our people is the best, the best. When, when did you believe you could win at what moment <laughs> i don't know i don't know uh well the moment we scored after we collapsed it's quick so i had we had the feeling that we had the chance to score the goal so what tribute do you pay to your players pep there were some doubts from some critics at the start of the season said you needed a center forward you showed them a different way well, it's part of the job listen we, we don't want to be judged don't do a public job so it's normal so what it means to me is that the magnitude of the achievement is related at the magnitude of your rival. A your rival, I never see a team like Liverpool in my life. So I know it's tough, but the big congratulations, they help us to be better team, better team, season by season. And of course, today is a special because it's the fifth anniversary for the arena in Manchester. Yes. The 22 people were killed for their families. Of course, today was a special for our people. We talk about that and, and the guys did it. So, Pep, new contract, surely now. Sorry? You have to sign a new contract now, please. <laughs> now golf. <laughs> now golf. 
Clearly you drive your players. Where does the desire come from you? What drives you every week? All athletes, when they start in the competition, when they start to be there, want to win. So, of course, I have the feeling, had the feeling that the rivals here are so tough, the next season will be tougher. And, uh, and you have to prepare. Uh, we will be there, and, uh, but now, I'm sorry, I don't have energy and the desire to think about the next season. Now, it was a real tough two months in the Champions League and, uh, and here, and uh, yeah, but we are champion again. We are, during, during one year, we'll defend our crown again and again. You obviously made some great substitutions in your time. Where does that one rank, bringing on Gundogan? And wait, because next season is five substitutions. And you will be how genius I am. You will see. <laughs> Congratulations, off you go and enjoy it. Thank you so much for entertaining us. Ilkay Gundogan really was a masterstroke coming on with about half an hour or less to go, scoring two of the goals in the comeback. And that meant that Fernandinho, after his final game of his final season, lifts the Premier League trophy aloft as Manchester City are declared champions once more. Pep Guardiola has called his team legends. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.